All right, so here I want to work through a similar problem. I want to have you watch a little clip first. This is a clip of some uh, cheerleaders performing this, I don't know, this act. Uh, this video went viral on the, video, on the internet a couple of years ago. All right, so you might have seen it. Um, I want you to think about how can we use this approach to energy, conservation of energy, in order to determine her velocity at various points. I want to know her velocity at the bottom of the trajectory. I want to know her velocity at the middle of the trajectory as well when she well when she does her thing. All right, so let's go ahead and watch the clip. You'll watch the whole thing. It's very short though. All right, so you can go and watch it here. All right, so what we had here was a young lady and she they have a basketball hoop. And they take this young lady. They throw her up. And then she comes back down again. Okay, I want to know, first of all, what is the total energy at the top of her trajectory? And in order to do this, we need to know, well, first of all, that her potential energy is the only energy that she has at the top because her kinetic energy goes to zero since her speed is equal to zero, just like we learned in chapter two. When you throw something up at the top of the trajectory, the speed goes to zero, the velocity goes to zero. All right, so I want to know her total energy, and her total energy is just going to be made up of her potential energy which is equal to mg times h. So we need to make some assumptions about that. Um, her mass, first of all, she's a pretty small woman. So I'll say that about 50 kilograms. That's about 110 pounds. I think that's pretty reasonable, about 50 kilograms. Uh, and she goes up to a height of, I don't know, I mean, this is about 10 feet, right? So this is about twice that, or 20 feet, which is six meters. And then, of course, also we have our uh, energy. I'll just call it 10. Or, excuse me, our acceleration due to gravity, g. And so that's equal to 3,000 joules. So all throughout her trajectory, she has an energy of 3,000 joules. Now I want to know what is the, her velocity at the bottom of the trajectory right after she leaves the sky's hands. Now, I know also that at the bottom that she has a kinetic energy equal to 3,000 joules. In fact, she has that number all throughout her trajectory. She always has 3,000 joules of energy. Right. Because at the bottom, I know that H equals zero, and potential energy is also equal to zero. So I say kinet kinetic energy, which is 3,000 joules, equals one half mv squared. One half of m, which is 50 kilograms, v squared, and solving for v, I find that her speed is about 10 meters per second, which is what, about 10, 15 miles an hour or so. Is that right? Uh, no, about 20 miles an hour, excuse me. Um, now finally, I wanna know what is her speed when she goes through the basketball hoop. Now when she goes through the basketball hoop, I know that her total energy is still 3,000 joules, all right, but through the hoop, she has both kinetic energy, and I'll call this KEH, plus PEH, where H is the height of the hoop. All right, so she has 3,000 joules equals one half of M, which is 50 kilograms, V squared, plus M, which is 50 kilograms, 10 meters per second squared, times H, which uh, let's say that was well, about three meters, about 10 feet or three meters. All right, and then I solve this for V, and I find that her speed is eight meters per second, giving her the appropriate kinetic energy paired with her potential energy to give her a total energy of um, 3,000 joules. Several problems in the homework for this uh, conservation of energy. You'll certainly see it on the quiz. Very common thing on standardized tests as well.